Hello and a very warm welcome to the Internet of Things Made Simple. I'm Larry Mohumer. This is the fourth episode in our COVID series, and I thank you very much for joining us. Before we get started, I humbly ask the same two things. If you like this podcast, why not subscribe to it using your favorite podcast service? And if that service allows you to, kindly leave a review. I have spoken before, an awful lot actually, about how IoT enables communication with remote devices. The description that I use is that it provides a really, really long cable-like experience for you to gather information that you would normally have to do in person. This has always had a strong business case, one that grows substantially depending on the value brought by the uptime of that device. However, in the time of COVID, it brings an extra return that we never had thought of. In this episode, we talk about how remote monitoring just became a lot more valuable in the time of COVID than ever before. We get started by talking about my dishwasher. And no, I did not misspeak. The episode was conceived when my dishwasher crapped out. I went online after it did, as most of the retail locations close to me are closed, and tried to find someone to sell and install a new one. Unfortunately, while they would sell it to me, all of them had suspended any in-home services due to the virus, and let's face it, I'm just not that handy to install my own dishwasher. When I started to look more into this subject, it appeared that many other companies were no longer providing in-home or in-office services similar to this. While this makes sense for something non-essential like a dishwasher, although I can say it's essential because I haven't washed dishes manually in a long time, but that's a different thing. What about a device that is essential? If an MRI machine fails at a busy hospital, I would think that a repair person would have to be out there to fix it no matter what's going on. The same would go for a lighting system at a busy grocery store or perhaps a piece of diagnostic equipment used by those who maintain vehicles for public safety. These machines just need to be repaired, virus or no virus. But does repair mean that you always have to send somebody out to the site every time? In the age of software being present on every device, many of them are able to be repaired over the air. I've spoken previously about how Honda updated the firmware on my transmission to better optimize the gear ratios, and I suspect that many machines would have this capability. If it's a higher volume product, like say sold in the hundreds of thousands or millions, like a car, there's a good chance that a cellular module has been built into the product to enable this communication to take place. However, many machines have not taken that step, but do have a serial or ethernet port that a cellular gateway can use to enable remote communications. In many cases, a technician upon arriving to fix one of these devices will attach their tablet or laptop or phone to it via diagnostic cable. The gateway, as I mentioned off the top, to keep things simple, does that by acting like a really long cable. This allows for work to be done remotely. It will let the technician know what air codes are present and what parts might be needed before they go out, reducing repair time and unnecessary trips. However, it gets better than that in many cases as increasingly problems, like my transmission, can be fixed remotely using software upgrades or patches. It might be an upgrade to the firmware or software, it might be a reboot or the changing of a setting. In many cases, the technician will no longer have to go on site. While we usually think about how this reduces cost, in this time that we're in, it may be more important that it keeps people safe. Why does a technician have to potentially bring in viruses or pick one up from a hospital if that can be avoided? Now, to be clear, not all devices have the ability to be communicated with using a cellular gateway. But increasingly, more and more devices have a USB, serial, or Ethernet port, or something more technical like an RS-485, or they may have some sort of short area wireless communication like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. When we come back from a short break, we'll wrap this puppy up. So, how do you get started? Well, first, check to see if there's some sort of port or connectivity option that your device supports. There are gateways that can communicate with different ports using many different protocols, which is just a fancy word for languages. Next, find out if there's an application that you can use to connect with the remote device. Hint, it's using the same application that you would use to diagnose issues in front of the device. Many of these applications have the option of doing this remotely. If this still makes things a bit more confusing than you like, why not reach out to Novatech to get started? You can send an email to sales at novatech.com to kick things off. 
Many thanks for taking time to listen to this episode. We look forward to hearing from you. The best place to start is our Facebook page, The Internet of Things Made Simple. Take care and stay safe. I'm Larry Boy Humor. Humor.